Base isolation was actually developed in New Zealand in the 70s by a chap called Bill Robinson. And what he developed was large rubber blocks, which the building sits on top of. And inside the rubber blocks, he has a lead cylinder. What we're seeing here is one of the multiple lead rubber bearings that moved the stort in the, in the earthquake. The base isolated buildings have two foundations. They have one that's on the ground, then they have the base isolators, and then they have another foundation which sits on top of the isolators, which the building's built on top of that. What we've got here is the, the main building above and the foundations below. And, and during the earthquake, the ground does this. It actually leaves the building behind, and between my hands are the lead rubber bearings. So when the earthquake comes through, the structure is literally isolated from the ground. Because of the lead rubber bearing inside, these bearings will go up to its height sideways, but they eventually come back upright. When there'll be enough strength and uh, elasticity in the rubber blocks to pull the building back basically upright. And these bearings are in a perfectly good shape to go through future uh, big earthquakes. Now there's thousands of examples around the world of base isolated bridges and buildings. Examples in New Zealand is the Williams Clayton building, which is the first building to be done. Parliament Buildings was retrofitted. Te Papa was a new building. Christchurch Women's is the only base isolated building in the South Island. So there's a certain type of building that suits base isolation. The idea is you're trying to build a big, stiff, heavyish box. You can't really sit a two-storey timber building on a base isolation. There's not enough mass. The idea is to have the mass of the building sitting there while the ground moves underneath it. So concrete lends itself towards base isolated structures. There's a strong perception inside the Canterbury that concrete buildings didn't perform well. In fact, the concrete buildings performed outstandingly well. We had two really unfortunate failures. PGC was 1960s, well before the seismic era. CTV is early seismic era. Our current building stock is very much a use once throwaway building. We can't really repair these buildings. And as a result of them being permanently damaged, we can't put the people back in. If we can't put the people back in, their businesses can't continue. A building structure costs about 25% of the building. The rest of it's the claddings, the fittings, the gold-plated gold grille taps and the toilets. To the normal investor, they want a good-looking building that people will go and occupy. So unfortunately, the drivers behind economy in buildings hasn't got a lot to the structure. And we're talking 2 to 5% of cost of structure which is 1% to 3% of the cost of the total building to go from what we've suffered in Canterbury through to buildings which people can reoccupy, continue their businesses, not lose their investment in the property, not argue with insurance companies. 1% to 3% of the cost of the total building to go from current buildings to future buildings. Base isolation. There's a perception that it's super high tech that it's all too complicated and you need PhDs and you need, uh, you need to wear white coats when you're pouring the concrete. Um, no, not at all. To construct it, particularly with new buildings, is actually a piece of cake. Normal care and attention, normal good practice on sites and construction quality is all you need, and it's a really elegant, simple solution. This sort of bearing here is a slider bearing or a pot bearing, and it doesn't dissipate the energy, they're just simply sliders. So the, the building slides over the top of the foundations, um, and it's still supporting a huge amount of weight above, because these are the sort of bearings they use in bridges. It's a cost efficiency thing. We don't need to have the expensive rubber bearings everywhere. These bearings are back to exactly where they were supposed to be and are ready to go for the next big earthquake as well. A case in point with base isolation is Christchurch Women's. Christchurch Women's became the response centre for Christchurch major medical, because the main hospital buildings, traditional buildings, were knocked out. This is the primary thing about base isolation. It allows the building to continue to be occupied and continue to function.